Good afternoon, Christ City Church. It is good to be here. In fact, it is great to be here. My name is Maffey. I'm on the staff team here at church, and it's really, really awesome to have you. Um, if you're, you're just tuning in for the first time, or um, if you've been coming along a few weeks, and it's really great to have you join us. And we hope this service today blesses you. We hope it encourages you. And it's, it's funny, you know, we are uh, on Sunday, the 14th of February. To some people, it is Valentine's Day. And today, to me, that's a day I try and keep my head down. Because where I currently am, there are, is no rose or flower shop within 5K of me. And um, I, I'm, I'm unable to buy roses and flowers over the phone. I'm too nervous to do it online as well just in case I get scammed. So there's no flowers in this household today. And the old restrictions have really frustrated me on that one. So just uh, in the chat, or if you have any roses within, uh, within reaching distance, get the roses on the screen. Do we see who has got what? And that will be good crack. Um, you know, I, I, I appreciate we're all online. And as much as we would like to be in, in person, it's just not possible at this time. And whenever we're in person, you've got little groups of people chatting in diff different spaces. There's different conversations going on. And, and, you know, it's the kind of place where if you want to be a part of the conversation, you can. And if you don't want to be, well, you, can, you can step back or you can go somewhere else. O online is kind of the same, but because we don't have to participate. But it's also slightly different because we've got a chat fe feature. And on this feature, there's going to be conversations. And, and you know, guys, you, you can participate as much as you want on it or as little as you want. And we, we want to try and foster a sense of community here as best as we can. And so if you want to participate in the chat, then feel totally free to. And if you don't feel comfortable to or, or you kind of feel out of it, then, then that's OK also. Um, but I, I just encourage you, if you're comfortable, church, turn on your webcam. And if you're not comfortable with it and you're still, um, if I can twist your arm, then go for it. And if you don't want to at all, then that, that's OK. I think it's it's really key to kind of aid community and, and give us a sense of seeing each other in lockdown. There's many of your beautiful faces that I haven't got to see in person in quite some time. And so hopefully as spring comes, the restrictions will ease and we'll get to see more face-to-face -face stuff. Again, all you'll see in me is a little five foot five guy. So maybe you're not missing all that much of me, but I would love to see you turn on your camera um, if, if you're able and if you feel comfortable. So if, if you're new and uh, or if you've just been coming a few weeks, then you'll see this service is only going to be one hour long. We should be finished up by half five. There's going to be a reading. It's going to be a short talk. It's going to be a fun icebreaker to do with Crocs. We'll get to hear your opinions on them. We're going to have some prayers. We're going to have a couple of songs. And there's going to be a chance to chat at the end. So I, I'd encourage you to, to plug in as we worship Jesus today. So listen, I'm going to hand you over to Mimi. Hi guys, welcome to the church, Christ City Church. My name is Mimi and I am part of the welcome team. Um, so essentially I'm here to kind of help you guys. Um, if you're new, you want to say hi, you want to find your way around, drop me a message and I can get in touch with you and, you know, get you um, linked in with one of our city groups or a few people within your um, sort of local area that you can meet up with so like from a safe distance when the restrictions when the restrictions are lifted just to help you out you know with the sense of community that we'd like to bring to the church and now i'm just going to hand over to andrew for our call of worship good afternoon everybody um i hope you're all well it's really good to be with you yes like mimi said my name is andrew I'm one of the, the student interns here at CCC. And if you've ever been to a Connect Night or maybe more recently on, on, on online church at Connect Light here at CCC, then you probably will have heard these following verses. Peter picks up on the language God uses when he speaks to the Israelites way back in the time of Exodus, thousands of years before showing how that the Bible is not a collection of 66 different stories, but rather one long progressive storyline of God reaching down to us. Let's read as Peter speaks to a group of Christians in the early church. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. 
once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Now, there's a few things I want you to see here. Firstly, we are special in God's eyes. Look at the description Peter uses. A chosen people, a royal priesthood, God's special possession, the people of God. Now, I don't know how this week has been for you. Maybe you've, you've, you've gotten a hard time at work from your manager and you feel just inadequate. Maybe a family member has had a go at you. Uh, hit you with a hurtful comment and you just feel really underappreciated. Maybe you've fallen into that pattern of sin again and it's just made you feel so unworthy in the eyes of God. Well, read these words with me. You are a treasure in God's eyes, so much so that he sent his only son to die so that you could be part of his family. We were not, we were once not a people, but now we are the people of God. We're in his family. And that is the second thing I want you to see, that God calls us out of the darkness into the light, his wonderful light. That, that's not by our own doing. That's not by us working harder. It, it's God reaching down and plucking us out of the darkness, lifting us into the light. Later on today, Steve will talk us through these facts and how they ought to affect our lives. But for now, I want you to remember who you are. You are God's special treasure you're God's special possession and he has brought you each and every one of us here he's brought us out of the darkness into the light I'm just going to pray um before Craig comes and sings with us but yeah let's take a couple of seconds to really settle ourselves um and then I'll pray dear lord thank you because of your sacrifice for us, or because of your sacrifice, we have been brought into the light. Thank you that despite our flaws, our weaknesses, and our inadequacies, we are your treasured possession. Help us see who we are, where our identity is. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Help us to live such lives in our families, workplaces, colleges, schools, and social circle, circles. Help us remember who we are and more importantly, who you are as we come to praise you in song. Amen. See what you can do, O oh God of wonders. Power has no end. I think you've done before in greater measure. And you will do again. There's no prison wall you can break through. No mountain you can move all things are possible there's nobody hope you can raise no soul that you can save all things are possible talk is time you can light it up you can light it up Hope arrives, death is overcome, you've already won, caught up in fire, rose in victory, now you're seated, forever on the throne. Yes. 
Come before God and pray together. Our great God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you that we can come before you this day and we declare that you are the God who has ever been, who was and is, and who is to come. The great God who is sovereignly over all things. The great God who even from eternity past, has known everything that's going to unfold and who, even from eternity past, decided to create a people for himself, a people to show forth his praises, as we just heard from First Peter. And we thank you, God, that you've called us as your people here in this city. We do thank you for our church. We thank you for how you've drawn us together. And though we can't gather in person, we can gather online and we gather around you and we thank you for the huge privilege that is. And, oh God, we pray that this day as we come shortly to hear from your word, as we uh, sing your praises, as we gather together across the Internet, we pray you would encourage us, you would challenge us, you would speak to us. 
We pray as we've been considering from the book of Colossians that we would be a people who are rooted in Christ, who continue to go on in him, rooted and built up in him, giving thanks, growing, thankful in all things, looking to Jesus, not looking to anything else. We pray that would be the reality of this church together as a body. And we pray for each of us in our individual lives, in our work, in our home lives, in our free time, in the choices we make, we pray that we would be Christ-centered. We pray that we would be making wise decisions. We pray for a rich opportunity to be speaking of you and to be showing your love in word and in action. So grant us eyes to see the many opportunities, the good works that you've laid ahead of us. And we want to pray also for all other believers in the city as they gather in their various churches. We pray that you would strengthen them. We pray you would bless their ministries, and not only in this city, but across this whole country and throughout the whole world, wherever your people gather this day and throughout the days and weeks to come, we pray strengthen them. We pray would they be powerful witnesses of your grace in the cities and the countries in which you've put them. We pray around the world that your church would be a powerful prophetic voice pointing to you, the living God, and that you would turn the hearts of many to you in these days. And we do want to pray particularly as well for this nation in which we live. We pray, O oh God, for a stirring of your spirit in these times. We pray for great wisdom for all in decision-making positions, in business, in government, in healthcare, in every part of society here, in these great times of shaking and challenge. Grant them wisdom, we ask. Would justice be upheld and truth pursued? So God, we thank you we can bring all these prayers to you, knowing that you are the ever-living God who hears all prayers that come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we offer them to you with our thanks. Be with us this day, we ask, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Jez. Uh, guys, welcome. If, if you've come in late or if you've arrived online late, then, then welcome to Christ City Church. This is a part in our service where we do our icebreaker and our news. So you have come at such a fun time. All righty. So you can see a pair of crocs in front or you can see one croc in front of you. I figured that maybe two crocs in front of you would have been too many, so we just stuck with one. So for our icebreaker today, we have a little poll that we're going to get going. And it's simple. Crocs, yes or no. And just, just for uh, transparency here, if you're on this call and you're a co-host uh, or you're a host, i.e. you're participating, then you're not going to be able to vote, unfortunately. So there's probably about 10 or 12 people here that cannot vote. Um, so it'd be cool if you can vote to get uh, your uh, get your vote into the chat and we will see how this poll goes. It looks pretty one way at the moment. I, I can't see the yeses coming back, but you, you never know. It's probably not going to be all that tight. Look at that, 69.31. Would you, would you look at that, Steve Vaughan? Two thirds of the people on this call say no to Crocs. Um, I, I don't know if you can un unmute yourself or if you even want to say anything at this point, or maybe you're going to wait until the talk. But it looks pretty unanimous there. 62.38. <laughs> Steve has been silenced. <laughs> That's amazing. They're good for gardening. Uh, according to Natatonos. Andrew says every day of the week and twice on Sundays. I think Andrew wants to be like Stephen, but we'll say no more about that. Alex says, yes, fake news. Uh, the ladder of flip-flops, that's amazing, Owen. Uh, if anyone doesn't know what a ladder is, send Owen a private message and ask. And Le Leanne says she really doesn't understand the, the croc hate for their, their just shoes. That's, that's a valid opinion, um, Leanne. I'll not say what, what side I'm on. <laughs> Great for a run down to collect eggs from the hens. That's amazing. I have been nearly persuaded to go for a pair. Only thing is, with my small feet, they might look like children's shoes. So I figured I'll just steer clear from them. Listen, that is us for our icebreaker. It is pretty unanimous. 
I see 6238, and that is it for today. So I would like to introduce Ola, and she's going to come and do our news with me. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ola and I'll just um, share a few items and uh, news items with you. Um, so first thing uh, coming up are, is a new series of our lockdown seminars. So there's no denying that different areas of our lives have been affected uh, by this ongoing lockdown and restrictions. Um, so we'll be just hosting a series of seminars over Feb February and March. Um, they'll just aim at starting uh, conversations around some of these topics to see how they've been impacted and how we can navigate them faithfully as Christians. So we'll be kicking off with a singleness in lockdown and that will be next Sunday after the service. Um, so there will be a discussion around how being single has been impacted during the pandemic um, and how we can thrive during this time. Um, and as well as you'll have a chance to um, share experiences with others and see what's been help helpful for people and what's been tough and um, consider together best course of action. And following that, um, so following Sunday on the 28th of February, there will be marriage in lockdown. And that one will be before the service. So just note that time, it will be 3 to 4 p.m. Um, as to not clash with bedtime, dinner time uh, for kids. And um, one you can, what you can always do is one person attends a seminar, another person babysits or something I use a lot in our city group, mute button. Perfect for that opportunity as well. Um, so again, we'll be considering how marriages have been affected um, by the restrictions. Um, as a lot of people work from home, that means more time together, different routines. Um, so we'll be looking into how we can navigate um, all these things faithfully as Christians and grow healthy marriages. Over to you, Math. Awesome, thanks, Ola. And our last news item is Connect Light. Um, so you, you maybe have seen if you've been joining the church the past few months that we, we do one of these nights five times a year. So four or five, maybe six times a year, we'll have a Connect Light. Or if we can meet in person, a Connect Night. You get it? Light, night. Amazing. So if you haven't been to one of these before, and, and if you, you're, you're new to the church or you've been coming a few months then I would encourage you, put this date in the diary, Sunday the 28th of February. So today, two weeks straight after the service, there will be a quick half an hour get together, maybe 35 minutes get together, where a couple of us uh, from the church will, will, will get to meet with you, will get to chat with you, and we'll get to know you, and then you'll also get to know us. And we'll get to share a little bit about our vision and our values here at CCC. And, you know, it's a really great opportunity for you to ask any questions you may have. Perhaps you came along to the AGM last week and you've got a couple of questions you're not too sure who to ask. Maybe you, you want to know who's on the staff team or who's doing what or who's involved where. Come along to Connect Light in two weeks' time. And there will be a small gathering. It'll be fun. And we might even have pizza if we can somehow get it organised. But come along. It'll be half an hour and be super fun. And it'll be a great opportunity for you to connect to us and for us to connect to you. So I'm, I'm going to bring it over to Franny now. She's going to do her reading. Yeah, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Franny, and I'll be doing our reading today. So we're looking at Colossians 3, verses 1 to chapter 4, verse 1. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs in your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge and the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, 
clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit, to your, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it not only when their eyes on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. So let's just take a minute to pray. Heavenly Father, as we open our hearts to your word and Steve's teaching today, let us be reminded that you continually send your spirit to make us alive in Christ. Thank you for being our one true father who we know will always love us in times where we place your wor our worldly values above your kingdom. We pray for Steve and his teaching today and everyone in our church community that they may receive your message and do all things in your name. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. Oh man, nice to be here guys. And uh, thank you Franny and Crocs definitely win. And I was canceled and that is uh, very unfair. Anyway uh nice to nice to be with you many new parents will know the strange experience of having to discipline their first child for the first time typically around the age of 12 to 18 months and it's quite a disorientating moment what it was in my experience because up till this point in your life you have had no parental disciplining responsibility and you're not sure what to do how to do it how strong to be how you know gentle to be and every parent's got to figure it out and what can make the whole process of disciplining your children even harder is trying not to laugh while you're doing it and you may want to laugh because while they were naughty they also did something funny or you may want to laugh because while you discipline them they pull this really strange face and you're you trying not to crack up or you may want to laugh because what they've done is exactly what you do and that's making you feel pretty bad and you know you're going to get it from your spouse uh but whatever reason disciplining your children can be a kind of just surprising and challenging experience i've also heard new school teachers have a similar experience when they have to discipline, you know, people in the class, the pupils in the classroom, and we sort of you, you pinch yourself and you go, "Am I? Is, is it? Is this me? Do, do I? Am I the one now that has to discipline? Why is it so surprising for new parents and, and I assume new school teachers? So disorientating, the first time you have to discipline. Well, it's because you're playing a new role that you've never played before, but because your identity has changed, that role is now yours to play. You weren't a parent, so you never really had to discipline any kids. You weren't a school teacher, so you never had to you know, discipline kids in the, in the classroom. Now you are a parent, now you are a school teacher. That's my identity. I've got to now live this out. But as with any identity change and the ramifications of how we live, it doesn't come overnight. In fact, you're figuring it out. Am I getting it right? Am I getting it wrong? It's not natural to me. In fact, it feels awkward. Is this really who I am? You even question, is this really who I am? You have an identity kind of crisis. But over time, as you adopt your identity, and as you therefore learn to live out the roles which your identity require, you do become confident and comfortable in who you are. Well, the Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 3, is teaching the church he is writing to how to become confident and comfortable 
in their new identity as Christians, to live out the implications of who they are now in Jesus, so they can feel increasingly comfortable and confident in who they are. It's going to take time. No Christian ever gets it overnight. No one ever gets it overnight. You have to learn to inhabit over time your new identity. So what is our new identity? Well, I'm not going to go over last week's sermon, but I'm going to summarize it for you really quickly. Here's what we learned last week from Colossians chapter 3. Paul says the key to the whole Christian life, the key to everything really, if you want to learn to live as a Christian, is to remember who you are. In fact, better is we phrased to be who you now are in Jesus. Paul's going to say, once you know your identity in Jesus, your mindset and your heart changes. That was last week. Today, he says your habits and your relationship change. Mind and heart last week, today relationships and habits. Let me put it like this to you. Do you, on this call now, want to be someone less dominated by fear? Do you want to have a tighter rein on your tongue? Do you want to live sexually pure lives as Jesus outlined for us? Do you want to love people who are different from you? Do you want to manage your anger better? Do you want to be less envious, bitter and judgmental? Do you want to be less emotionally unstable? Do you want to be less of a coward? Do you want to love your spouse and your children as you should if you have them? Do you want to complain less? Do you want to kick a habit or an addiction that you know is not beneficial for you? And positively, do you want to grow in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control? How does that kind of growth happen? Paul says, be who you now are through faith in Christ. Who are we? Again, really briefly, last week we learnt. In the past, I've died and raised with Christ. I'm a whole new person. I used to define myself like the world tries to define ourselves. My identity was attached to the worldly labels of the job I had, the money I earned, the role I play day to day, uh, what I look like, my waistline my success or failure, my popularity, my family and my home, my sexual preference and activity. That's how the world says, define yourself. The Christian says, I've died to try to define myself according to those terms. And I've been raised with Christ. I no longer define myself by my performance, but by his performance. That's the past. I'm a whole new person. I don't feel like it will come to that, but you are. So in the present, he says you're hidden with Christ. The glory of this new identity that you have in Jesus is at odds with the world and the world won't see it and you often won't feel it because you're sort of out of joint. Your identity, the glory of it is hidden right now. But Paul says one day, so that's past, present, future, the hiddenness is going to disappear and you're going to appear with Christ in glory. And then all of the frailties, all of the frustrations, all of the tussling around your identity in this world as we're out of sync with it often, the hiddenness will be replaced with joy and wonder. That's our identity. And now Paul gets really practical and he says, right, mind and heart, that was last week. This week he says, okay, so take off the old clothes. Verses 5 to 11, that don't fit who you now are. They're not appropriate to your new identity. Uh, 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 they're the old self. And he says, put on the new set of clothes, the new self, who really, who you really are and you will one day truly be, your new clothes. So there's a negative and a positive. There's a taking off of old clothes and a putting on of new clothes. There's a putting to death of the old self and a adopting the new self. I have in my mind a picture of someone who's taking off successive layers of clothing, even those Crocs. <laughs> uh, you take off the old clothes uh, in order to actively put on the new clothes. You remove the layers of sin, the old mindset, the old habits, and you put on the new clothes, the new mindset and the new habits. You can't put on the new clothes of your identity until you've taken the old ones off. 
You cannot put on your new self created to be like God until you've taken off that old layer of sin. In other words, if you know there are areas in your life that don't line up to your new identity, you can't just ignore them and say, I'm going to put on the clothes of righteousness over the top of this thing. I know I need to get rid of, but I'm not going to. You can't. You can't conceal the old rags of sin. No, take off that old rag so the new rag, the, the new cloth of righteousness can go on, on top so it can fit snugly so you can be shining. So let's have a look at some of these old clothes that don't befit our new identity. Did you see the phrase? It says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. The first three on the list are sexual immorality, impurity and lust. I wonder how you'd feel. I wonder how I'd feel. Hmm. If we put that on the screen right now, it doesn't matter that we're online. If it was your life, how would you feel? Everyone to see your life uncut. Would it be your thought life you'd be ashamed of? Entertaining sexual thoughts and fantasies that don't honor God? Have your eyes been wandering to a guy or a girl with lustful thoughts maybe it's what you've been getting up to with your girlfriend or boyfriend that doesn't honor god maybe you're struggling with porn depending on the, the statistics up to a third of the people on this call will have viewed porn this week if that's you can i encourage you to do four things remember god loves you and rejoices over you with singing number one number two Get rid of it. Number three, tell someone and find support. Number four, remember God loves you and rejoices over you with singing. Don't try and fight sexual sin with rules and willpower. We looked at it a few weeks ago in Colossians 2. It doesn't work. Fight sexual sin by understanding who you are. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, different ways we pervert God's good gift of sex. It's an offense to God. Look what it says in verse six. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Get rid of it. It offends God. It's inappropriate. Take that bit of clothing off. It stinks. The video that you and I don't want to see, God sees it. It offends him. Take it off. And he says, take it off with evil desires and greed, which is idolatry. Why idolatry? Because we're putting something else before God. In fact, the word for evil desires is actually over desires in the Greek. You are overly desiring a, desiring a good thing over God. It's not a bad desire. It's not an evil desire. It's an over desire for food, for drink, for something that is, means that you've looked for somewhere else for refuge in your pressure rather than looking to God. It's an over desire for something. And it's idolatry and it's inappropriate for the children of God. Remember, Paul, he's not wanting to point the finger and condemn us and fill us with guilt. He's not telling us to clean up our act so that we'll be accepted by God. He's saying now that you are accepted by God through faith in Christ, live like that. So look at verse seven. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. This is the past life that you said no to. It's your old identity. It's like being given the wonderful privilege of being transferred from Manchester United to Tottenham Hotspur, from Adam to Christ. And we're now wearing the bright, beautiful, white, shining Tottenham Hotspur kit rather than the grotty, tatty, red, disgusting Man United kit. If you're not into sports, think of it like this. It's like being released from a nasty prison. You used to curl up in your bed when someone walked by because you didn't want to get beaten up. You'd pass dirty magazines through the wall. You'd threaten and intimidate people to be first in line for the grub. But once you're out of the prison, you don't act like that anymore. You're in a different world now. 
In fact, the first thing you do when you get out of prison is take off the old nasty prison clothes and buy some new ones. It'd be very strange to be walking outside of a prison wearing prison clothes. Why? Because you're not a prisoner anymore. So take off the old clothes and put on the new ones. Whatever analogy works for you, the big idea is how do you grow as a Christian? How do you fight sexual sin and greed and idolatry? Not by rules and feeling guilty by saying, who am I? I've been called up to play for Ireland, so put on the Ireland jersey. I've been released from prison, so put on the normal clothes of a free person and smell the fresh air. Become who you are. That's Paul's first list of clothes we've got to take off. Let's look at the second list. But now you must rid yourself of all such things as anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. The, sec- the first list is more private. The second list is all to do with how we relate to other people. And they're relevant more than ever in lockdown, where relationships, particularly the ones close to us in our homes, can get fraught. Outbursts of anger. Maybe you react to someone in a way that's sharp, like I did this week, and it reflects your heart. Maybe it comes out with filthy language. Malice, intention to do evil. You know, someone's wound you up. Someone's maybe done something and you want to get them back and you can feel it in your heart. How did, where did that come from? Gossip. It's so easy to talk about someone else behind their back. And you know why it is? Because as you push them down, you push yourself up. As you exclude them, you include yourself. Gossip makes you look and feel better while it makes someone else look and if they find out, feel worse. It's your old clothes. Take it off. How? If you know who you are in Jesus, you will have no need. You'll feel no need to push anyone else down to boost yourself because you've been boosted in Christ. You're valued, you're loved, you're secure. If your identity is insecure, you want to push people down. If you go, I'm secure in Jesus, you'll never feel the need. And then quite simply, verse nine, he says, do not lie to each other. So simple. It's hard though, isn't it? Never to lie ever. Let your yes be yes and your no, no. No white lies, no unhelpful exaggeration, no quick justification for why. Paul says, take that bit of clothing off. It's not you anymore. It's not who you are. That's how you used to live in the prison. You've been free. Stop it. Because look what he says, verses 9 and 10. Since you've taken off the old self with its practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image of its creator, this is not you anymore. Once you know who you are and how secure you are, you'll never feel the need to lie. Take off the old clothes that are inappropriate to your new life in Jesus. And then he says, once you've got rid of all that stuff, let's put on the good stuff. Let's put on what we really are like, like that fits our identity now. Verses 12 to 17. He says, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Again, these five are how we relate to other people, notice. You know, growing up, I thought holiness was something I did on my own as I prayed and read my Bible. You know, memorize the book of Ezekiel as you fast for 40 days for going sleep so you can pray all the time. Yeah, that's the super holy person. Paul says, no, it's not. The holy person is compassionate, kind, humble, gentle and patient in relationships. It's not about isolation. You want to know how holy you are? How do you relate to other people? And in verse 11, the verse I haven't read just as we've gone through it, but Franny did, Paul names all kinds of people that are in this Colossian church, Jew and Gentile, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, Christ. He says Christ is in all of that, all those people. You want to grow as a Christian? Start to relate to people in your local church community who are vastly different from you, with different perspectives, different ways of doing things, but you're united in Christ and Christ is in all. If you can learn to love and be compassionate and kind and all these things to that community, Paul says, ah, now you're wearing the clothes that befit the children of God. But look, Paul cannot bang on about this enough. Like, how do we grow as Christians? It's not about condemnation because look how he starts. Therefore, as God's chosen 
people wholly and dearly loved clothe yourselves? Question. How many people were crucified either side of Jesus when Jesus was crucified? Two. One on either side. How do you know? Because the Bible tells me so. It's the only reason you know. What does the Bible say about those that have put their faith in Jesus? God's chosen, holy, and dearly loved people. The reason we get rid of the old clothes and put on the new is not to make us holy, chosen, and dearly loved. By faith, in Christ and his work on the cross for us, we have become those things in the sight of God. So he says, since you are now holy, practice holiness in your relationships. It's so liberating. God is not a tyrant who we should anxiously try to please day to day. Have I lived a good enough life? Have I been holy enough? No, that's the Islamic God, Allah. You should be fearful of that God. God says, For those that have put their faith in Jesus, enjoy my grace. Enjoy being my child. Bask in the fact that you are righteous in my sight through Christ. The problem isn't that you're not trying hard enough for me. The problem is you've forgotten who you are. And so Paul moves on and says, let me tell you more about who you are and the clothes you now need to wear. Verse 13, bear with each other and forgive another if uh, and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against one another someone forgive as the lord forgave you when someone hurts you your old identity retaliate your new identity forgive as the lord forgave okay i oh i have to figure out my new identity now i'm still going to get hurt people are still going to offend me particularly in a mixed church a diverse church someone's going to rub me up the wrong way ah i've got to learn to bear with them now because that's what my God has done with me. Christ was clothed in forgiveness and I'm a child of the King, therefore I need to be clothed with forgiveness. What right do I have not to forgive my brother or sister when Christ forgave me a far more grievous and indefensible debt? And to top off all the other articles of clothing, Paul says, put on love which binds it all. It's, you know, you see, it's the outer clothing, the final piece you put on, you've got rid of all the old stuff, you're putting on the new bit. And what's the final layer? Love, the Christian badge of distinctiveness. Jesus said, by this will all men know you're my disciples. What's the bit that's shining to the world? Love. And as I've already pointed out, love in a very diverse community that brings that unity. And this love is beautifully complemented by peace and thankfulness in verse 15 and instructing one another with songs and with gratitude to God in verse 16. This is a completely new set of clothes for the counter-cultural community God is creating in Christ. So what happens? You've taken off all the old clothes, you put on all the new clothes, the final piece of clothing is love. He says, whatever you do, shine. Now you're going to shine in in word or deed. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him. Thanks to God the Father through him. Time, Time permits me for going into detail. But Paul goes on to show how this new set of clothes affects every sphere of your life. He says, marriages, it's not about competition and selfish ambition. It's about mutual service and love. He says, family, it's not about bickering and fighting. It's about respect, honor, and encouragement. He says, in the workplace, it's not about cheating and cutting corners or people pleasing or playing political games so you can advance. No, it's about honesty. It's about integrity. It's about hard work as if you're working for the Lord. And those in positions of authority, it's not about favoritism. It's about fairness. And in our relationship with non-believers, we pray for them. We're wise in the way we act and our conversations are gracious and full of salt. So we might provoke questions. Leanne will look at that next week. In other words, our new identity affects everything, every habit, every relationship, every sphere, every moment. 
Paul says, shine now. Once you've taken off the old clothes and put on the new ones, shine for Jesus. What he's getting at is we carry the reputation of the Father everywhere we go. To do everything in the name of God the Father means that how people see you is how they see the Father. We represent our Father God. We are stewards of our Father's reputation in the world. God has tied his reputation to our lives. This is a high and a holy calling. Every time I swear, I give my Father in heaven a bad name. Every time I post something on social media that's unhelpful, or gossip on WhatsApp, I put God's reputation in jeopardy. Every time I'm unforgiving, I'm not in tune with my Savior who prayed, Father, forgive them. Every time I retaliate with anger, it reflects badly on the Prince of Peace. Every time I have one too many pipes and go over the limit uh, of my limit, it spoils the reputation of my humble and gentle master. Every time I'm impatient or unkind, or harsh or stern as I was this week in my home. I'm not in line with my identity as a child of the King of Kings. Church, let's know who we are. Let's get our hearts and our minds aligned with our new identity. Let's take off the old clothes. Let's put on the new clothes and let's shine for Jesus in every habit, in every relationship, in every sphere, in every moment. Can I exhort you all, brothers and sisters, this week, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is your identity. This is who you are. Let's pray. Take a moment to think of maybe one item of clothing that you want to take off, that you know that the, the Holy Spirit has just convicted you now and you need, to, you need to just take a moment to be right with God. Not to feel condemned. He's not pointing the finger. He's saying this isn't the clothing that fits you anymore as a child of God. And think of one item of clothing that you, you've struggled to put on so far. That, you know, like I said at the beginning, that the new identity, it's just taken a little while to, to settle in your heart who you really are in Jesus. Because once it settles, you'll, you'll start putting on the right clothes. Just take a moment. What do you want to take off? And what do you want to put on? Oh, Lord Jesus, we, we thank you that you have... We thank you that we do not define ourselves anymore. We're not trying to go out there and prove ourselves and discover ourselves and achieve an identity for ourselves through what we do. It's all of what you have done for us, your performance, your death on a cross, your forgiveness, our adoption as sons and daughters of the King of Kings because of what you've done, that we are now wholly chosen and dearly loved in Christ. I pray, Lord, for every one of us, I pray for myself, that we would learn to increasingly align our hearts, align our minds, align our behaviours and the way we relate to other people in line and in light of our new identity. Lord, for those that are feeling convicted now, may they know there is no judgment, there's no fear, there's no condemnation. But you're just encouraging them to remember that they might be increasingly who you've made them to be. And for all of us, Lord, may we increasingly reflect you, our master, as we face every day and every moment and every relationship. May we shine for you because we've taken off the old clothes and we put on the new clothes. We're not in prison anymore. We've been set free and we're enjoying the sweet air and the new clothes you've given us. So help us this week, Holy Spirit, as we go forward to, to remember these truths and apply them to our lives. In the moments where we, we find ourselves reacting in the wrong way or thinking in the wrong way this week, would you just draw us, Holy Spirit, back to these verses and our identity and the clothes that are fitting for who we now are in Jesus, in his name and for his glory. Amen. Who am I to 
the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, he is ransomed. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin. Thank you, Jesus, that who the Son sets free, he is free indeed. Jesus, I thank you that we can be called children of God. And, uh, and, and Jesus, I, I thank you that the disciples were known as followers of you because they'd spent time with you. And so, Jesus, I pray that this coming week, we as a church would be so invested in you, so close to you, and so dearly in love with you that we cannot help but become more like you. I thank you, Jesus, that our identity is wrapped up in who you are and what you have done. And so I pray that instead of striving and uh, instead of trying harder, Jesus, we would be fit to rest in what you have achieved for us rather than what we do. And so, Jesus, I pray that our holiness uh, would, would come from a, an, an overflow of our desire for you. 
So Jesus, I pray you'd reign in our lives this week. Would you reign over every area of our lives this week? In your name, amen. Amen. Church, that, that's the end of our service. There's going to be a song playing in the background and then breakout rooms are going to open up. I'd encourage you, stick around and hang out. Get into a breakout room. Say somebody you haven't seen in a wee while. Say hi. And remember the next couple of weeks, we have the marriage seminar on 28th and we have the singleness seminar on the 21st. So have a great week and we will see you soon.